Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we plant some snapdragon seeds. So let's go. Based on my zip code, my last frost date falls somewhere during the middle of May. And today's date is February 21st, which means in about three months, I should be experiencing my last frost. So keep in mind, whenever we talk about our last frost date, that's really just an average. So you always still want to be watching the weather a few weeks after your quote unquote average last frost date. I love snapdragons. Growing up as a kid, my parents always grew snapdragons in the yard. It was one of my dad's favorite flowers. And during the past few years, I've learned that there are so many different things to know about snapdragons. The one thing that I think a lot of us know is that snapdragons can come in a lot of different colors. You often will find snapdragons in different shades like red, yellow, pink, and everything in between. And the other thing is you will find snapdragons in different sizes. There are some snapdragons that are very tall and often need to be staked. And then there are some shorter varieties of snapdragons that are perfect to put in pots or even as bedding plants towards the front of a border. One thing is for sure, snapdragons need a lot of sun. So you don't want to be growing snapdragons if your yard is all shade. There are a lot of other plants that would do well in the shade. But if you have a sunny area in your yard, I think snapdragons deserve a place in your yard. One thing that I wanted to share that I learned over the last few years is that not all snapdragons are created equally. There are different groupings or classifications of snapdragons, and I wanted to share that with you. So group one is considered the winter flowering snapdragon, and it performs with short days and low light. Group two flowers in winter to early spring with increasing day length and temperatures. Group three consists of spring flowering varieties, and then finally, group four flowers under high light intensities or long days. Did you know that there were all these different groupings of snapdragons? For many years, I didn't know that, but now I know that. And it's good to know that information because especially if you're growing snapdragons for cut flower purposes, then it's nice to have a different succession of blooming when it comes to the snapdragons. Last year, I grew a number of packets by Burpee called Ford Hook Tall Snapdragons. And they did well, they were very pretty. What I did not like about them was that they required staking. And I just wanna grow snapdragons for the purposes of enjoying them in my yard more as a border plant, something towards the front of a border. I don't necessarily wanna grow them for cutting, especially if they get that tall and they need staking. So that's something to keep in mind when you're growing different flowers, such as the snapdragon, is what's your end goal? Do you want to use it for cut flowers or do you just want to enjoy the plant in a small container pot or towards the front of a flower bed? Or perhaps you want to have both and that's okay too. So it's good to know that when it comes to snapdragon. Last year I visited a garden local to my area here and they have a lot of beautiful flowers. I did ask the groundskeeper there if I could collect the seeds and they said not a problem. And they had a bunch of the shorter variety snapdragons. Now, I don't know the variety name. I have no idea. I just knew that they were snapdragons. I knew that they were different colors, that they were on the shorter side, and I knew I needed to have some of them. So I did collect a ton of seeds, and I'm very excited to grow those this year. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on is just growing the shorter variety snapdragons. When I plant a lot of seeds indoors, I like to start them in a container similar to this. And I got this from a restaurant. It's just a restaurant to go container. You can see it's fairly shallow and I just make drainage holes in the bottom of it. I like to fill this up with seed starting mix. When it comes to watering this, you definitely don't wanna water on the top. It's not good for the plant. It can cause a lot of issues in the long run. So I prefer to bottom water and that's why I made the holes in the bottom. As long as I put this into some sort of a tray that's solid bottom with nothing, no holes in it and has water in it, I can then put this container down in that. And what it does is it, the water seeps up through the holes and it bottom waters my plants. And then the second thing is I will plant a ton of seeds in here. It saves a lot of room under my grow lights. And once the plants have a couple of sets of leaves on them, 
that's when I'm going to carefully prick them out of this container. I use something like a pen, the end of a pen, and I carefully pull out the plant. Typically, you don't want to hold the plant by the stem. You want to hold it by its leaf very carefully. And I will prick it out, and I will put them then into individual six packs. However, you don't need to do this process. If you want to grow seeds, let's say snapdragon seeds, you can definitely just plant them directly into six packs. I just prefer to do this method. It works for me and it's something I enjoy, but I just wanted to share that there are a couple of different ways to sow your snapdragon seeds. And when it comes to what to use for a uh, potting medium or a seed starting medium, there are a few different options. You can make your own seed starting mix. You can use peat moss or you can use cocoa core. You can buy your own seed starting mix or you can buy potting mix. All of those should work fine. However, I will caution, snapdragon seeds are very, very small. They're pretty tiny. It's my preference when it comes to snapdragons to use something that's very fine, very fluffy. So if I'm picking something to sow my snapdragon seeds in, I would prefer to use some sort of a seed starting mix. And for my seed starting mix, I use peat moss as well as vermiculite. I don't like to use the perlite to start with because the perlite is like these large white uh, balls or rocks and I feel like they get in the way of the seeds trying to germinate. So I always start with something very fluffy like the peat moss and vermiculite but then once I prick out the seedlings from this tray and I pot them up they will then get potted up into something that also includes the perlite. Perlite's great. It's great for draining the water. The vermiculite is great for retaining the water. So it's good to know what the difference is between both of those. So let's go in for a closer look and let's get planting with some of these seeds. Yes, this is a pot. I do like to make my own seed starting mix and I mix it in this pot here. And then I like to pre-moisten the seed starting mix. And it's my preference to use boiling hot water. I poured it in here already. I mixed all of this up and then I covered this with a plate. And the reason I like to use boiling hot water is to kill off any possible fungus gnat eggs that may be in here, but you don't need to use boiling hot water if you don't want to. At a minimum, you need to use water, it can be cold water, in order to pre-moisten the potting mix or seed starting mix. So you can see when I squeeze this that there is no water coming out here. And you don't want your seed starting mix to be too wet. You also don't want it to be too dry. And you'll notice that when I squeeze it, it, it's holding its form. That shows that this seed starting mix is good and moist, but not too moist. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and add some seed starting mix to this container. And you just wanna make sure that you're leveling it out. And then I'm lightly pushing down. The key with when you put seed starting mix or potting mix in any sort of container, be it a container like this or a six pack or a three inch pot, you want to make sure you're pushing down on your potting medium, but you don't want to push down too hard. And the reason that we are pushing down is to just take out any air pockets that are in here. But we also don't want to push down too hard because that's not good for the root development for the plants. And that's nice and leveled at this point. Let's go ahead and sow the seeds. You can see here that I collected these seeds myself. I wrote down Snapdragon, it's a mix. They are on the shorter side. I collected them from a city called Portsmouth, and I collected them last year in 2023. I like to make videos showing how to collect your own seeds from plants. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'll definitely show you at the end of the season how to collect your own seeds from a snapdragon plant. And right there, those little teeny tiny black specks that you see, those are the snapdragon seeds. And I'm just going to basically spread all of these seeds on here, which I know this is very heavy how I'm sowing these seeds, but I want a lot of these snapdragons in my yard. If you were to sow snapdragon seeds in little small six packs, at a minimum, if it were me, I would put at least two seeds in each cell. And then if both seeds germinated, you could always cut the weakest one, or you could prick out one and put it into a different cell. I've been doing it this way where I multi-sow the seeds in containers like this for years now. And this method has really worked for me. It's the anticipation of watching the plants germinate when they're ready and then taking my time and pricking them out. 
and I feel like I tend to have uh, less issues in terms of space under my lights all at once. There's been too many times where I have sown seeds in six packs and maybe only half of the cells in a six pack are filled. So with this process, this just seems to work better for me in terms of filling up my six packs. Now that we've gone ahead and sowed the seeds on here, the key with snapdragons is that you want to have the seeds on the top. You don't want to cover them. And if you are going to cover them, you want to cover them very lightly. And I would recommend covering them with vermiculite because vermiculite would still allow some light to come in, but it also would retain the moisture, which is very important for the seeds germinating. However, my experience has been I haven't covered them at all. And so I'm not going to cover them today. But what I am going to do is I'm going to press down on the seeds because I want to make sure that those seeds make good contact with the soil. The next thing I'm going to do, even though the seed starting mix has been pre-moistened, is just add a small amount of water. Now you want to cover this with some sort of a humidity dome that's clear. You might have one already in your house, or you can use something like clear plastic wrap, which is what I'm going to use. And the whole purpose for doing this is to basically trap in the moisture and to make it nice and humid in there, which the seeds will love and will help with them germinating. And then it's always good to label what you've just planted. And I like to write down the seed that we've sown and the date that we sowed the seeds. I'm actually going to use some self-control this year. I have other seeds here that are snapdragons that I collected. I have a tall variety from last year, and it's yellow color. And I have another yellow one here that I believe is tall. I have a light pink. I have a red. I have a mix of colors and another red. And I'm going to wait and see how these do first because you saw we planted a ton of seeds, more than I need. And I know that those are a shorter type Snapdragon, which is what I'm looking for. I don't know, I didn't label these, so I don't know if these are taller or shorter. Only one of them is labeled as tall. And I really just don't need that many more snapdragons. And that's key when it comes to planting your seeds, is only grow what you need. So for right now, we're not gonna plant these. I wanted to also share some other information with you. When it comes to the seeds, you wanna always read what's on the back of your seed packet. But as you saw, with our seed packet, there's nothing on the back of it because we collected the seeds ourselves. So the internet is great. That's where you can find a lot of great information. And I often go to multiple different websites to try to find the best information that I can find. And if one website says, start your seeds 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost, and another website says, start your seeds 8 to 10 weeks before your last frost, Somewhere in there gives you a general idea of when to start your seeds. So, you know, just know that when you go to multiple sites, you're going to find a lot of great information. It might not be 100% the same, but you're trying to look for some general guidelines that you can follow. So since this packet did not have any information on it, let's read a little bit more about the seeds. So you want to sow your Snapdragon seeds indoors about 12 weeks before your last frost. I am definitely within that 12-week window. I probably could have started these seeds a few weeks ago, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm still happy that we're starting them today. And then it says, sow the seeds thinly and barely press into the seed starting formula. Do not cover with soil. Even though we did not sow the seeds thinly in here, I'm not too worried about it because, like I said, we'll be pricking them out and moving them up into bigger containers. And then it says, keep the soil moist at 65 degrees as snapdragons prefer cooler soil, so do not use bottom heat. That's very important. I think oftentimes we feel like we should be using a heat mat or some sort of bottom heat for all the seeds that we're starting, but it's really important to read what each of the plants or seeds that you're sowing require. So specifically here, it's telling us not to put it on a heat mat, so I won't. I'll just end up putting it basically on this rack behind me. I'll just put it over there, and 65 degrees should be fine during the day my house stays about that temperature and then it says the seedlings should emerge in about 8 to 14 days as soon as the seedlings emerge provide plenty of light so i will not put these under lights because i'll be checking them almost daily 
as soon as I see a number of seeds germinating, I will put this tray under a grow light and I will remove the humidity dome or the clear plastic wrap from it. And then it says to thin the seedlings to one seedling per cell. And that's very important. You don't want your plants competing with each other. Now this next part is very important. It says here to encourage better planting, pinch the tops off when the seedlings reach about three to four inches tall. And I did that last year. I made a video showing the process for how to do that with your snapdragons. And once these snapdragons are tall enough, I'll show you also the process for doing that. Because if you don't pinch your snapdragons, what's going to happen is they're going to get tall, but they'll kind of just be skinny. It, it won't branch out, and that means you won't have as many flowers. So you definitely want to do that. A few flowers require that or prefer that. Not every flower, but snapdragon is definitely one that you want to do pinching with. So there are a lot of things that we will be doing together when it comes to our snapdragons. For now, we play the waiting game until they germinate. And then I'll show you when I start pricking them out and putting them into six packs. And they'll probably even get bigger. They might possibly outgrow their six packs. And if they do, I'll show you the process for potting them up. But the most important thing will be bottom watering, fertilizing, pinching. The list goes on, bringing them outside to harden them off, and then finally planting them out in the ground. So you want to make sure that you follow along. There's lots of fun flowers still to be planted. I hope you're able to start some seeds indoors or at least start thinking about garden planting and maybe buying some plants. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.